we're in one run hq we've got people in australia we've got people in russia we've got still got a whole lot of pacific islanders running right now but i'm joined by bassos alexander uh i best known i think for your role with chris evans in absolutely every single thing he does sporting wise <laughs> and um also quite well known to me because you are, have just been the the greatest gentleman and supported all the crazy antics i get up to well uh, yeah to, i like uh, your crazy antics danny i really like your crazy antics so they're very easy to support um uh, well you've been wonderful with it what's um what's going on in your life right now Vassos? um well, right now, literally this minute, I, I, I work with Chris, as you mentioned, on a breakfast show. So I'm just home from the breakfast show. I'm topping up my caffeine as we speak. Great. Um, and um, I'm going to do my last bits of Christmas shopping before, um, at 7 p.m., um, doing this fantastic global run um, around Wimbledon in southwest London. And I'm going to do it with my 14-year-old son, Matthew. I was... Um, I was running with Matthew on the towpath on Tuesday evening and it was late, well, late-ish. I mean, it was certainly dark. It was about eight o'clock, 8 p.m. Um, and we forgot that Hammersmith Bridge is closed. So we went down Hammersmith Bridge thinking we'd cross the bridge and come home um, and then realised we couldn't do that. So we either had to go back up to Putney or back down to Barnes. And so it was sort of double the length of run that we thought it was going to be. We thought it was going to be 25 minutes, ended up being 50, 55 minutes. And we were both happily murbling away at each other, him in his sort of 14-year-old dribble, me with my 45-year-old dribble. And I suddenly realised that I just, there is not a human being, how many of us? Seven million, seven billion people on the planet. There's not a single one of them happier than I am now, running, chatting nonsense with my son in the light of a head torch next to the River Thames. And I'm going to sort of re redo the same, but in Wimbledon Common, um, in honour of you and this brilliant thing uh, later today. Mate, that is I, I, what so so much wiseness in that. You know, all you did was put on a pair of shorts and some trainers with with your son, and it transformed you into like the happiest being on the whole planet. Yeah, isn't that? I mean, this thing, I go even with um, you know, even just when it's you on your own, it just takes you to a place which is just so so removed from everything else that's going on in your life where no matter, no matter what those stresses are no matter what you're suffering from just putting on your trainers putting on your your shorts going for a little run it, it just changes everything doesn't it mm. yeah there might have been people as happy as i was on tuesday night and there might be people at seven o'clock tonight i hope there are as happy as i will be running and talking nonsense with my son but there won't be people happier because it's impossible it's literally impossible and if it is oh. i'm not interested <laughs> I love that. Love that. Um, and in, so we've got like we've got 15,000 people taking part now. The number's going sky high today and um, the donations are coming in from for the charities, which is absolutely marvellous. What do you think um, on all, of all the things? When, we're actually involved in that. The, the, the film run on together, weren't we, as well, which was what a lovely film that was just talking about all the benefits that running has to your life and what, what it can bring to you um you know just like that it just brings that sort of sort of happiness but I, one of the things I wanted to know because you get to kind of experience an exciting lifestyle where is where's the most exciting place you've run in the past oh exciting like sort of headline um like that question that used to be asked when I was a student about something completely different. Um, so the yeah. most <laughs> exciting place I've run, um, I'll answer that question, the other one for you, but not when there's anyone else watching. Um, the most exciting place I've run, I wonder, I did do a run in Zambia, right by the Victoria Falls. That was really cool. Um, once, I mean, if we're just literally just talking excitement, I have run in, um, I find it really exciting running in sort of in, in trackless, bare, brutal mountains. So Snowdonia, the Lake District, I absolutely love all that stuff where there's no path and you're just literally, you're going over the ground like people had done, I suppose, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. Um, but also excitingly, once I was chased, I mean, this is entirely true, it's, it's less interesting than it sounds, but I'll, I'll give it to you anyway. Um, I was chased by a wolf whilst running hungover one morning in Estonia, in rural Estonia. That's the highlight for you, mate. <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, and, and, and obviously it didn't catch you. Did you, how did you get away? Yeah, it was a sort of, I mean, cause I guess it definitely did chase me, but it chased me in a very sort of languid, I'm really not interested in you. I will eat you, but only if you make it impossible for me not to. So what I suggest you do, this wolf was saying to me is, and it was still about a hundred yards away. I hadn't reached a flat out sprint because I didn't know if that was the bad thing to do. You know, like bears, they say, don't, don't run away. Um, I didn't know if that, that also applied to wolves. So I just, I sort of carried on running and it languidly chased me a little bit, it did a sort of arc around. And then I just turned back and it carried on the way it was going. So it was a, it was a sort of a chase. It, no, it was definitely a chase, but it just, what I never properly feared for my life. Maybe that's because I was so hungover, I wasn't really thinking straight. Yeah, for it, it sounds like you're probably a little bit drunk. Uh, yeah. That was calming your nerves. Um, so, so, um, and yes, you've you've done all sorts of um, amazing things with your running. What um, for those people that are coming up ahead of you? You know, we've, we've had probably 500 people run so far. We've got another one, 14,500 to go. If they're listening in, what would be your piece of advice uh, for their run today? Because lots of the people aren't, you know, they're, they're not top class runners. Lots of them are just pulling on their shoes, putting on their shorts for their for the first time in a, in a little while or for the first time in a long while. What advice would you give to them when they're just kind of setting out on their run today? Just one piece of advice, literally one piece of advice, but I mean it from the heart, smile. Smile, even if come seven o'clock this evening, you're not really fancying it. You don't really fancy it. Like one of those days where your legs feel heavy and you don't really fancy your run, in which case, walk a bit if you want, walk a lot if you want, but whatever you do, just smile. It's that whole thing, even if you, you know, you start smiling and you end up feeling happier, the sort of fake it till you make it, it really does work. But you know, smiling when you're running is just the best thing. And then people, even in London, where I am, even here, if you smile while you run, people will smile back at you, which doesn't often happen in London. So just smile and enjoy your run. You're very, very lucky to have discovered running, to be out running in the first place. So just appreciate what you've got and smile. That's my one piece of advice, um, and, and, and I'll definitely be doing it. And, and you know, when you're smiling at those other runners, it's like, uh, we, you're part of this community now. Just yeah. all you do is set out from your door with your trainers on and you suddenly become part of this hugely supportive community that would, you know, this, this event does not exist without this community. It, you know, the, the way they've got behind us, the way they've pushed, pushed for runners all over the place and all that sort of stuff. And I also, I don't know whether you know, you probably know this, but um, Kipchoge, when he's suffering, um, he smiles. So yeah. the commentators know that when they see him smiling, he's, he's actually in the pain cave at that point. And he just smiles to try and bring a little bit of goodness back into himself. I talked to him about that once. I said to him, you know, when I'm running a marathon and I start suffering, I look like Frankenstein, you know? And when you smile, you look, you know, when you suffer, you lose smile. I mean, for, what's going, what, what is going on there? And he said exactly what I just said. He said, if you smile, you'll sort of kid yourself that it's a little bit easier than it is. So it does make it. And, and you know, I know some researchers from, I think, Belfast University did this properly, you know, they got, you got to, I think they did it on a treadmill. They got 10 runners to a smile, 10 runners to grimace, 10 runners neutral expression, and the perceived effort and the actual effort and the speed, it was significantly easier, like 10% easier if you're smiling. So it works on a physical level as well. You'll just not hurt as much. Um, but you know, quite apart from that, Kipchoge, because he has a he has a closed mouth smile, doesn't he? Like yeah. that. Um it means he's breathing through his nose. And I've started doing that lately. It's quite hard when you start, but you get used to it very quickly, like within a couple of weeks, certainly a month. I now run with my mouth shut, just breathing through my nose, which is an automatic, A, automatic smile, and B, that makes it easier as well. That's how we're meant to run. And you know, he's, he's the guy who can run the two hour marathon, the sub two marathon. And if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Breathing through your nose, another top tip. Wow. Um... I, I, um, I kind of imagine doing that and the fact that I, it makes me feel already like I'm suffocating. So I'm going to give yeah. it a go and see how it, what it does for me. You have to stick with it. You do have to stick with it. You know, I started it and I thought, well, I'm not doing this. Um, but I read a book by James Nestor called Breath. And basically, we all breathe through our mouths and we should, we should all breathe through our noses. Like scientific fact, proven fact. So, um, and I tried it running and it's my, it, eventually, once you get over yourself, well, it's like running, you know, when running, you start running, running's hard, right? And then you get used to it and then you can run 
for, you know, a very long way in your case and my case. Um, and it's the same with no nose breathing. It'll take you a few weeks, but suddenly you'll get it. And now, even when I'm running up a hill, I'm breathing through my nose. Wow, I can't even believe that. I can't, I can't imagine it. But Vassos, um, we're, we're short on time. That's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for the tip. Number one tip, smile everyone. In fact, let's not just do it in, in whilst we're running. Let's just start doing it in life a little bit more. But, yes, but yes, when you yes. are suffering runner, running, Kipchoge, this science behind it, smile, it makes it a lot better for you. Uh, Danny, lovely to see you. Yeah, Good luck with this. Me. This is an ace thing. Congratulations on it. Really, Thanks, really man. ace. Yeah, we really feel it. And I think it's uh, coming, coming true right now, seeing all those amazing people running all around the world. So that's great. Big love, Vassos. Big love, Danny. Take Enjoy care. your run tonight with Matthew. Will do. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.